Hello guys, Cool Yoshi here, and welcome back to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Solo Pikachu Only Challenge, while also being a blind playthrough. In the last episode, we left off defeating the six gym leader Sabrina, but now we're kind of stuck because we aren't able to use any of the techniques. So, I found the first one here by looking up online. I was actually a lot closer than I thought. But, I could have picked this up right when I was in Future City. So, we'll stay here together. As a thanks, I will teach you the secret technique C skim. With this technique, you can travel on wire. Pikachu wants to learn it as well. I'm not sure if it can learn it. It's not water type. You look determined just like my Lapras. Okay, I'll teach you the technique then. <laughs> to keep balance on the water, flow the center of gravity and keep balance with your upper body. That's cool. And we get that board as well. Yes, we already bought quite a bit of items. I made sure the X attacks were high last time, but anyways. We have a few vengeances to do. First starting off in Celadon, there's another thing we missed the first time. Uh, but yeah, I do believe I've waited long enough on some of these trainers. It's time to take them out. The word turtle one and the grass type one here were... Well, this one I didn't even know is Pokemon. I just straight up skipped him because I was worried, but... Old me must have been really silly, but new me is not going to let this happen. Again, if I ever have a ground type, I could just use two X attacks plus an accuracy and then take them out. I maybe didn't like this guy because it's a grass type, obviously, which is really annoying. The only move that will work is Iron Tail. Although I do level out level her entire team now, so it should be a lot easier than the last time we did this. Since we have so much money, we probably don't have to use that trick to heal as often. Our first nine tails, by the way. The fact that Pikachu was able to learn uh, the Thunderbolt so early definitely makes this a lot easier to do. I don't want to be too much of an idiot, so I'll use a Hyper Potion right on this Pokemon no matter what comes out. Because you never know if it's going to one-shot or not. And we have the Return of Starmie. Despite being a water type and me having the advantage, it is actually a water psychic, by the way. But it's still water type, so it means it should be easy. But no, I did mention that... Starmie, at least in the original game, had a lot of special and was very powerful. It still is in this game, but I can see that they nerfed it quite a bit. Again, most the heal was mostly just for safety, because I can't take a chance with that not killing and then losing a lot of time. Now, I will have to use 2x attacks and defense to get through the ground type Pokemon because whenever I see ground type Pokemon that's basically what I have to do. That's what's really annoying. And to make it truly matters worse, the Trilly guy had a war total to begin with, so it was one that I actually uh, had an advantage over and then it changed to his favor when that other thing changed. And there was also another coach trainer that was really annoying as well. We're gonna save and take on him first before we do anything else, though. Ah, rare candy. Glad we 
We missed that the last time we were here. Thank goodness that we picked it up that time. Okay, I heard the save sound. Let's go ahead and battle. Again, this route is really good for the speedrun because there's not a lot of required trainers at all. With good movement, you can skip almost every major one. Don't remember what this guy had. Again, like I said, it's been a very long time. <laughs> About at least three episodes ago or so, when I first entered the cycling road and trained on the trainers here. Okay, I remember. This guy had a B-Gel that used the gel run for some reason. I took that out and that's when the problems started arising. I will definitely be healing off off this time though. If it is a ground type Pokemon, mainly to check the defense and since I have enough healing power I can storm out of Earthquake if I wanted to, but Yeah, see there. This is what I remember. What's so trolly is it was the last Pokemon too. The first two were alright, and then this Sansas just ruins everything. Sansas is like my nightmare and a half. The best way of surviving it is to just be overleveled, have a lot of defense, and then just tank the hit like crazy. Okay. I so I'm able to survive that, no problem, thankfully. But... Uh, gonna actually... Do a little bit... Yeah, I do wanna... I don't wanna take forever on this. Since I have so much money, I'm gonna actually do the heal stall this time around. So the idea is there's a strat you can do that... Probably never really do. I used to do this a lot, where you just, uh, every time you take a hit from an opponent that hits you down a lot of HP, you just heal immediately, because, especially if the ground type's doing so much damage, you have to heal pretty much after everything. You can't take any chances with this. The only time that'll change is if, like, see, there, it, like, see, uh, that, see, if I didn't, uh, do that, he would have killed me because that is a damage range we are dealing with. His drill and is a damage range to kill me, and it also automatically hits the damage range if the second hit is a critical, which is why I am healing a lot. I haven't done this in a while, but there's a reason why I don't do this, because it's literally just about two minutes of just doing this over and over again to stall him out of PP so he can't use that move anymore and then he decides to use something different. And since it's a coach trainer as well, it's gonna have good AI, which means they're only going for super effective moves. Imagine if I did that and then he ha uh, uh, went straight to Earthquake. From the looks of it though, he's a uh, TM user, which means he oh, uses drill run, which means he's gonna give me drill run as a TM when I beat him. That's what I'm thinking. I get out of like 11 of these, <laughs> so I'll just keep healing. The only time I can change this strategy is if I get that 1% miss, and so far, Pikachu hasn't done that random miss yet. A little bit annoying. Again, it is in heart mode, which means I am able to potentially, if I get lucky, have them randomly miss me. Or I can survive an attack with 1 HP, but that's not as useful. I prefer for the attack to miss, because then I could make this go by a lot quicker. But then it would make it a lot riskier, because then a crit would just send me through a lot of stuff and so far it would have already been a loss because the very first move I tried to block was a critical hit. So had I just defended I probably would have lost assuming that. Yeah. I don't really have a choice here. 
I'm very new to drill runs, so I have no idea how much PP it has. I know it has at least 10. Once he changes, I know he's out of PP because he'll change once he... If he changes the dig, that's going to be really good because then I'll actually get a chance to use some defenses rather than having to wait. That's when the advantage will swing my way a little bit. See, there we go. He's just run out of his uh, annoying Jeron move, and now he's forced to use nothing but uh, his regular attack, which is Slash, which isn't as powerful. Now that he's run out of jail on PP, I could just go for the win here. Okay, so from the looks of it, it's only 15, just like Iron Tail. Of course, my moves all have more PP because I use PP ups on them. I did use my PP ups. I used three on Thunderbolt and three on Iron Tail. And now we get his TM, which is Drill Run. Wow, so just like before, the right side does not have a trainer. So, again, this is. One of the areas where if you took a specific route for this area, you can play for the entire area without even fighting a single trainer. Or wild, for that matter. Countering any wilds. If you did it right. Both in original and the second game. But I do believe in the original there might have been one required trainer. But at least now, and I'm pretty sure back then... There's a specific route you could take. It was very specific because if you moved any any way wrong, you would get into a battle. But if you moved in just the right way, you can uh take the thing out. Unlike the last time, this opponent does have earthquakes, so again I have a specific setup I must do for this in order to take it out. So we need to hope this red tail doesn't have Two overpowered moves. Because if he has anything that does a lot of damage to me, I'm in trouble. So, we'll do defense. And for fun, two attacks, obviously. Oh, wow. He has Surf. Okay, well, that's weaker than I thought. I can definitely work with that. Defense again. I'm unsure if that's special defense. If it goes down. See, I really like that when you use the moves, it, it automatically raises. Okay, that was still 30, so that is definitely. Uh... Okay, let's just get the accuracy out of the way first. I only ever use one of these because using any more would just be kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, now we heal. Okay, so I am able to deal with this, thankfully. Again, I am overleveled, but I can't take any more chances after... Because literally any earthquake just destroys me. It's absolutely annoying. I could probably do this with just attack, but probably would... Healing would still be probably the safest thing to do, so... Again... It's so annoying that just one ground Pokemon forces me to do a completely different strategy. Or instead of doing the classic strategy, I use X attacks and other stuff, and yeah. My apologies for anybody that say, oh, the Ace Traders weren't in the game. They actually were in the original game at all, they just had a different name. In the original game, they were called Cool Trainers. Anybody that plays... Pokemon yell just like me would have remembered that. Kind of an interesting name change, which is why starting in Gen 4, they were renamed. They became Ace Trainers instead, and that just seems a lot nicer because Ace just. Because I believe Ace means they're really good and normally have multiple Pokemon. Each one of them seems to have at least three Pokemon compared to. 
the classic our trainers, they're a lot weaker. Okay, now that I've set this up, we have to hope for the sweep to work. That's the best way of defeating them, like I said. Like, you do all that, and the best way to defeat the ground-type Pokemon is to defeat it as quickly as possible. Because if you just heal on it, it will take way too long. And this was the one that did it in Marowak. But, I have setups this time, so let's see what happens this time. There we go. That's what you get for painting me, annoying Marowak. See, look, always, almost immediately after that, okay, well, I'm glad I still get to use the attack power, because double kick will work good here, and it'll one-hit him, saving a little bit of time, but always immediately after, it gives us an easy Pokemon that's way easier to defeat. Your baby. This guy mentions having babies, really? I think he's talking about uh, his Pokemon, but yeah, I, I don't really care. <laughs> I have a Pikachu, that's all I need. Kind of an interesting text line, though, I will say. Okay, so this will bring me really close to the second uh, to last of the many special trainers and I was also really close to this one too but I don't think I was able to do it right away it's right over here you just use this want to know the details yes great vehicle that allows you to fly in the sky it's a marvelous invention if I do say so myself secret technique I even know I worked really hard on this no he wants to try it I'll tell you how the ride this was seen secret technique sky desk but Pikachu wants to fly I version instead of you. Great. Matches my inspiration perfectly. Let's get to it. Do this. Panel and pull. Then now be like that. And with these balloons, you're in the air. I'm Pikachu learns Sky Dash. We have to select the secret technique from the menu to use that one. This machine, so be sure to enjoy many trips throughout the sky. And there we go, that replaces the fly. So I was a lot closer than I thought. I could have actually had it even earlier if I had known that, but this is why it's a blind playthrough. <laughs> That's the only thing I really didn't know. I knew where most major items were, but... For the most part, I don't know what's changed in this game overall as a whole. I do believe, though, that the Elite Four has been nerfed quite a bit, so I probably will be able to take that out a lot quicker than I thought possible. So what I'll do is I'll try to challenge the Elite Four all in one round when I am able to get there. Okay. So, uh, let's just save to make sure I confirm all that, because, again, I do like saving pretty much everywhere. And so now, to use this technique, we actually have to go into this rare menu. It's trying to react, and we choose Guy Dash. Now we pick one of the talents, and we can instantly warp to that location. This is the route, by the way, I was talking about. Right here. To Cinnabar Island. That is the spot I mentioned where you can train her. And <laughs> quite an interesting animation, I will say so myself. This definitely, at least in the original game, opens us up to catch a lot of water-type Pokémon and also battle a lot of water-types. This is where I mentioned where it might get a little bit slow, but... Yeah... 
It won't be that, so I will be defeating at least Brain, hopefully, in this episode, though it depends how long the Pokemon Tower takes, which is coming up next. If you were picked, like, a Fire-type, this would probably be, like, the most annoying section for you. Or, like, a bad type for Eevee, like, Flareon. Not to, uh, not to really get annoying or anything, but I prefer Vaporeon over most of the others because he has, uh, more move accessibility. This is on the surface, so, although I am saving, I hope this... Coach Trainer is uh, sticking with the ways they are doing and having water types. Because if she changes like that, it <laughs> might be another one of those cases again. Oh well, I do still overlevel them by a bit. That one again, does she really have to just only spam Lovely Kiss? Is that what all the Jinxes like to do, really? When they could just be attacking? Probably gonna be another Dream Eater run. Though I already got the TM Dream Eater, but... Nope, okay. Changed it up that time. Oh, I see now. This hour move, Ice Punch, is his best move, and it didn't deal much damage at all. From the looks of it, anything that has Ice Punch is going to be what is used here, and time for my safety heal to make sure I don't get too greedy here. Gotta always remember to use those heals. Also, thank gosh. No ground type this time. Thank goodness, that would have been so annoying. Still pretty strong, because obviously he's a Kangastan. Really tanky and also infamous for being one of the hardest Pokemon to catch in the entire game. That is not safe at all. I have to heal yet again, because it the... Thunderbolt looks like it's a range to kill him in two, so I'm just going to heal and then attack. Okay, no confusion to deal with, at least not for now. Very strange that we don't have to deal with confusion yet. Because that normally would have came up from now, and normally there's like trainers that use Confuse Ray, but I took out the Ghost Types trainers so fast. Yeah, see, there's the TM Ice Punch. That could actually be good for Pikachu. Because Double Kick is kind of wearing off, we can remove that for Ice Punch, and if Ice Punch is able to work, that will save us. A little bit of annoyance in the Elite Four, specifically on Lance. Lance will definitely be a lot easier, but I do like my double kits use on grass types, so yeah. And that's even if Pikachu is able to use it at first. If Pikachu is not able to use it, it won't matter. And he has probably the six magic card. Yep, that's what I guess. I'm pretty sure at least one of them is at least one of them 
His boss is going to be upgraded to the Jarjos, but seriously, mister? <laughs> this is another kind of hilarious trainer. It's this late in the game and he has only Magikarp, for the most part. Even if he had Gyarados, I would take that out as well. These are kind of lame for experience, as you might have guessed, each one only resulting in about 68 experience, the least experience for every Pokemon in the entire game. He, he, even he knows that Magikarp is way too weak of a Pokemon. They all need to be Gyarados in order for it to even have a chance of doing anything. And we have the return of a uh, rock type again, because why not? Oh, it's not enough. Oh, beautiful time there to get the 1% miss. Or whatever that is, I forget. I think it's like, a, I don't know. Someone really needs to tell you what rate that is, but... Yeah. It definitely makes it so even moves with 100% accuracy can miss sometimes. That is correct. That was kind of cheap. <laughs> Considering I beat a rot type giant with a Pikachu. That is kind of a cheap shot, if you ask me. <laughs> Let's save again. And now heal at this point. Yeah. I mentioned the trainer has to be a specific kind in order for it to use water types. That doesn't mean that is there aren't going to be trainers that use stuff other than water types. Like any swimmers here are probably going to only use water types. Because it would be silly if they didn't. See, here we go. The return of the quick hit moves again. Thankfully, no freeze happened there, which would have just wasted a little bit of time. When it have taken me out, it would have just been annoying.
No crit. We're getting a lot of crits as well. Those could still happen on any move. Water stone. Classic water stone. Get in the water. I know this seems strange, but I still haven't found a moon still yet. They definitely changed that. There used to be more moonstones accessible in the early game. If I ever need to get more species Pokemon because of the Uzzle's darn gulls that might come into play again, then I'll know exactly where to go. I did mention there was an easy part, and this is the route I was trying to mention. It has a lot of very easy trainers to take out. And also, upon locking Surf, if we wanted to, we can go and catch the different legendary Pokémon. But I'm going to be doing that exclusively in a bonus episode, because again... Because of the way I'm playing in Cell Mode, I consider legendary Pokémon to be cheap. In other words, I just don't want to use them. I could use them if I want to, but I'd rather not. Again, like I said, I'm mainly saving anywhere, everywhere, just for my own safety. Goodness, this area actually has quite a bit of trainers. It's gonna take. Definitely more than one try to clear. We made it to Cinnabar Island. Thank you. Sorry about that sound. It's my thing probably going off again. Not sure if you heard that or not. But. Everything's fine. Don't worry. See, I am taking those Dre's advice. I am get doing heals every time I get across to that. This is also where we would normally get our fossil restored. Okay, now that I've healed, I think it's time for some more greed mode. Since there's so many water type trainers, I shouldn't have to heal for any of them if they're that easy. Because with the over level I have right now, I can take them all out in one hit. From the likes of it, Blaine's Pokemon are going to probably be around level 47 or so. Giovanni's going to have a, probably a boss of 50. Maybe not. 
have it at all, but the main problem is specific trainers in his gym will have ground types. That's what's going to make it very annoying. Just to clear all the trainers alone is going to be very difficult. That's when it will start getting a little bit expensive, but thankfully they did kind of balance it out and have a lot of money for us to play with, so... Especially with this experience, it shouldn't be a problem anymore. If I went the went too fast, it probably would have became a problem now. Again, I don't. Again, I should definitely go to Blade's gem, considering you know, his gem mostly pretty much only has fire types, so it won't be a problem for me either. So it will be at least decently challenging and will require some healing, but it's easy enough to the point where I can use specials to take care of most things in there, no problem. Probably use the same strategy as before two specials and then attack. And there's the sailors with their occasional. Uh, they don't always have water type Pokemon. They have Machop and Machoke as well, but thankfully that one is in pros of threat. Mainly for the swimmers, it's e they're easy enough to take out on our own. Now to actually go through Cinnabar Island. Starting with the Pokemon Mart to get some more healing items. And of course since it's in Gen 1, nothing's happened. There isn't even a sign of a volcano anywhere. Don't know how the volcano even managed to destroy the town in Gen 2 in the first place. Don't know... How do you let something like that happen? It, when the island's so tiny and doesn't even have a real volcano next to it, I'm guessing the island nearby is what caused the problem? I like this music too, it's really cool. I spawned right on a Pokemon that I didn't even want. Because why not? That was Devil Oak, because it literally just spawned on me right away. This looks a lot creepier than it did last time. Since this is a dungeon area, I'm gonna actually make use of Repel here. Just because then I can use it all at once. Pretty quickly. Come on, I'm running away. Now I can reuse it whenever I need them. Um. 
On the original game, this puzzle was definitely really confusing. The only thing I know is a requirement that was put on the game at one point. Where you had to take a specific drop in the floor to be able to go anywhere in this area. Now we have the return of the Burgoy Crest, for, which for the most part can have a bunch of different Pokemon, but they're already found in Blaine's Gem, which means for the most part they'll be using mostly fire types. Which are definitely more doable than any other type, because, yeah. I, it's very late in the game, but I think this is the first place where Grimer and Coughing can be found at decent terms, at least that's what I remember. They probably are found elsewhere, but... As you might have guessed, you can't move into these cracks this time. So the idea of finishing the floor is you have to go to this specific area at around the upper right spot. Fall down a specific floor. There's a little queue that you had to look for following the follow falling down it and then you would do something on that floor and on the bottom most floor in a different spot that would be where you'd finally find the secret key. No this is not purpose skip. Lane's gym is locked by default. We need to get the secret key I remember from the original game in order to progress any further. Last time I hit a Magmar this fire punch did so much damage. Again, it probably was just a critical hit, and I had... I wasn't over-leveled much at all. It was just kind of natural for Pikachu. I don't like that. Let's check for Poison Jab. You can never be sure with these mucks, but... Normally, they'll probably just use, like, Protect or something else they're more defensive than attacking. That's one of their defensive moves though, the disabled one. And Because I didn't use anything against him, he disabled a random move instead of the direct move, which was changed in Generation 2. I don't know. It's pretty funny because I def definitely did not use Double Kick right there. So, uh, it looks like it does disable a random move in this game, at least that I know of. So that was good enough. Sable can get annoying just for time constraints if it does do that. Each spot with this hidden door is uh, where a hidden spot would normally be in the original game. Save my progress because it's a coach trainer. She can literally have anything she wants. They usually try to keep to the theme of whatever trainer is in, but see, that's like that. And it's very annoying to set up on anything that's a uh, lot type trainer, so it's better to just go for the tape out right now. Trying to take them out. That's what you do. Good, defense drop. I can take him out. Okay, good. He's a dummy. 
Whoever is probably the safest of the ground types because it's not a ground type mainly, it's a rock and a ground type, and its main focus is rock type, which means it rarely will ever use Earthquake. As for Rhyhorn, not as much. Rhyhorn's main type is ground, but it can have rock type moves. Now in the classic. One ground type Pokemon leads to an hour. Again, there's nothing I can really do against these in terms of annoyance, so we just have to attack them right now and right now and hope that we take them out right away. And if we're not able to take them out, we just lose. That's why ground types are so annoying, as you might have guessed. And Duck Shield's the example of a glass cannon. It's one of the most damaging ground types in the entire game. That's why it did so much damage right there. Finally! Thank goodness. I'm starting to get worried. Finally, she stopped using ground types, swapped over to a polyrap instead. Knowing me, it's probably going to be a ground type move that gets used anyways, but still need to heal before I check. Okay, never mind. It was submission. Submission looks like. I remember that being a TM, so that... Wait, no, that he already has that. I don't know what TM she has, then, in that case. I'm guessing Submission or Earthquake. That's my first guess, but Giovanni gives you Earthquake when you beat him, so I'm not sure, still. Yeah, it was Rock'sai, it was Glaver's move. So only Glaver was able to use it. And in a double battle, you can hit two points at once with Rock'sai. Foul play. So they, you are still able to climb down the area, but instead of straight up falling into the area, you now have these ladders that you can move around. The scientist being on Cinnabar Island probably has Fire-type Pokemon, but the last time we saw him he had, like, other stuff. But it doesn't seem like he would really have much Ground-types, he's more of a Poison-type user. And I remember that as long as they don't have Poison Jab, it's not annoying at all. Besides, that... I was when we were close to their level that everything was really tough, which is why Pikachu percent is so hard. But now we're back into the slightly easy mode again, where everything is behind us. We'll just use our rare candies when we get to the Elite Four, and then we'll be able to beat them properly. Because with the amount of rare candies I'm getting, I should be able to beat the Elite for my first try, though I will be saving in between each one. Trying to greed through most of the Elite Fours by just using two special attacks and attacking just to have a little bit more of a challenge, but... I know that Champion will usually have a ground type, at least in the original game he led with a ground type, which... It was a very annoying start. Your best way of defeating it was to either... Well, defend wouldn't be really enough, so probably the best way for me to do it in this game is to just double defend right away like I've been doing for a while. Hope for good luck and no crit, and then after the first heal, use attacks and then just try to kill him as soon as possible, and then maybe set up our stuff. It's yet another Pokemon where you want to set up things up on a different Pokemon. And I'm definitely using all my repels here, because this is a pretty long area to go through with very little to no corridors at all to go through. 
I'm gonna be picking up every item here because I don't know where the big area is. See, right, right here. Oh, we have silver raspberries now. We had regular raspberries, now we have silver raspberries that we just picked up. I don't care, I'm just gonna fight him. Money is not infinite in this game, that's the main reason for why to do that. I'm over leveled, so even if it's an explosion, it's probably not gonna kill me for this percent. The last time it was seen, it did like no damage anyway. Nope, just another Swift user. This is a really weak move for him since it doesn't give him a same type attack bonus when he uses it. Thank you for not having the poison jab this time. I was about to say, the way Muck looks, you think it would know Sludge Bomb more than like Poison Jab. Thank goodness it didn't have Poison Jab this time. That one move was very annoying for Pikachu to deal with. If it were like a po act different, another poison type, then it would have just been completely fine. If it would have been my Neocane, I probably would have been fine in that same situation that took out Pikachu Poison Jab that went a few, several episodes ago. I definitely would have survived it that I did if it was a different Pokemon, but. We over them anyway, so now we're able to go for it just fine. We have a mysterious trainer here. Doesn't look like he's actually even a trainer. Yeah, it's a new thing that they put in to go back to the entrance. And here it is, the true final four. This is what was required and needed if you wanted to go for getting the secret key. You go in here, you press the secret switch, you go all the way to the right. And then you find the secret key on this floor. I like how it does try to tell you that you're on the right floor because Original game, it didn't really have much clearance, but there was a way to tell, at least, that you were on the right floor. Just, he has a lot of Pokemon. The bird girl is going to have something else. It may as well be poison types. That's what I would have... Uh, Chosen as a second type if I was him. But, yeah. Which means he should be easy as well. And yes, I know the second. I know the final gym of the game is going to be a big pain because there's normally a lot of ground types there. But. There is a small catch. There are types other than ground there. There are... Actually, a lot of the trainers don't always use ground types. In fact, a lot of them don't even use them at all. You have sidekick people in there, you have... Fighting types in there, and... Quite a bit, a little bit of everything. Geo if Giovanni leads with the Persian, that's going to be a big help for me, because then it'll 
turn into an easy fight. If he leads with the Doug Trio, though, that he has in Gen 1, blue and red, that's going to be very annoying to take out. So hit the secret switch and move on to this area. Find the secret bed. <laughs> Very nice that it's there. Oh, I took <laughs> several times for some reason. He saw me all the way from over there. there. I've, I've never, never seen them have ground types. They probably would never have them. They're more focused on electric and poison types than anything else. Yeah, see, there's the electric type. We're perfectly fine here. Not an easy area for Pikachu to take care of for the most part. Nothing that's too threatening. Nothing we can't take down, at least. Same goes for the gym, which is why I'm going to take it out as soon as possible. And this is where the second to last gym, I definitely want to at least try and enter it before the episode ends because I want to see if the there's a big requirement. Normally in the last, normally for the last gym, there is a natural requirement where you need to have at least seven gym badges before you even allow it into the eighth gym. That's the only requirement I know of in Gen One. So you leave this open, and this is normally where you would get an ice TM for like uh, I forgot what it is. Blizzard, yeah, Blizzard is found here normally. One of the strongest ice type moves in the entire game, Blizzard, is normally located here. And over here, we find the actual item we're looking for the secret key. At this point, if we get at. If we are told that our repel wore off, we're just going to. Going to go through even with the Pokemon there, because it will be pretty fine for the most part. Yeah, let's say no this time. Now we take this spot, which because of the teleport will conveniently take us to the entrance. And we get teleported outside, that's another new thing. Now this, oh uh, yes, this was a requirement as well. You straight up needed the secret key to enter this gem, which is another requirement. Here we go, first question. And we have a gem to take on. Okay, so he doesn't have a requirement because the requirement was the same as in Gen 1. You needed to have the secret key to even enter his area, which I did. So now I just have to do the question things. I think you do have to actually do the questions. Now, if you wanted to fight all the trainers, then what you would do is you would get the questions wrong on purpose, and yeah, you would fight another trainer. So, like, if you wanted a lot of experience from Gen 6's Electric Gem, you can get both of the questions wrong on purpose for extra battles. And you would end up fighting about 12 trainers overall. But it'd be kind of crazy to do. Um, this is mainly just for my experience, don't you worry, but leave like if you enjoyed, comment, rate, subscribe, and in the next video we'll be actually taking on Blaine's gym. Um, bye. See you in the next video.